<laughs> All right, this is Ronan Hart on June 28th, 2023. We're in Springfield, Ohio, speaking with Mr. Arthur Thomas, and I am joined by... Gabrielle Hurd. And Elio Alves. Mr. Thomas, to get started, could you just, as you just did, um, state your name for the record, and if you could spell it, just so we can have it for the transcriber. Arthur Lee Thomas, A-R-T-H-U-R-L-E-E-T-H-O-M-A-S. Do I pass? You pass. That's perfect. Okay. <laughs> so to get started, could you just tell us uh, where and when were you born? I was born in Piqua, Ohio, the 11th of May. 1934. So I was a Mother's Day gift. Oh. <laughs> That's wonderful. So what about your parents? Were they also from Ohio, I'm guessing? What did they yes, do? Yes, sir. Well, my mother was born in Ohio, and she was an Adams. This is the Adams line mm -hmm. that we'll be tracing and my father was born in Greencastle, Indiana, mm -hmm. where DePaul University is. Mm -hmm. So did they talk a lot about their ancestry when you were growing up? Not really. Uh, I knew my mother's side of the family much closer than I knew my father's side of the family mm -hmm. because they uh, all grew up or were born in Ohio in the Miami County, Shelby County, Champaign County area, the Miami Valley. Mm -hmm. And uh, I knew my grandmother was born in Rumley, Ohio, which was a black settlement in the, founded in the 1830s. And my mother was born in Anna, Ohio, which was formerly Anna Station, Ohio. And, uh, that's in Shelby County. Rumley's in Shelby County also. And uh, my great-grandmother was born in Rumley, Ohio. So we go back. Uh, that's where I get to leave from. And my middle name is, they were Lees. Mm -hmm. Lees married Adamses. And uh, we're all Miami Valley natives. Mm -hmm. Can you remember any particular stories that your mom or your dad might have told about their family, anything about grandparents or great grandparents? I were I vaguely remember my great-grandfather, Henry Lee, and he was blind. And uh, they used to, neighbors used to tell me the story about how he would dress me in the morning as a little tot, put a necktie on me, and we would go down to the corner pub and I would carry his beer back in <laughs> uh, a gallon jug. And he was blind? Yeah, he was blind. So did your clothes match usually? Well, <laughs> I think his wife matched up uh, okay. <laughs> my clothes. Yeah. Okay. 
So I'm curious when you first started getting interested in your heritage and your genealogy. After I met uh, my cousin, Rita Ann, and this was about 1980 at a family reunion. And I remarked that uh, my branch is represented on this family tree, which was on a sheet and drawn out. And her sister said, well, who is your family? And I began my research into my branch of the Adams family in, in earnest after I retired from the government in 1987. What did that research look like? Where, you, where were you finding this information? Uh, I would travel the courthouses in the area, in Urbana, Piqua, Sydney, and Springfield. And of course, the internet was just becoming available with uh, its resources. But uh, books and uh, courthouses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when did you first, in this story of your genealogy, start hearing about the Underground Railroad and maybe Lewis Adams and his connection to that? About 1992 was when we really got into it uh, at a family reunion. And uh, we, or at least I discovered that uh, Lewis Adams had been a conductor on the Underground Railroad through uh, Wilbur H. Siebert's books. Uh, that listed all of the conductors and operators by county within state. And the, uh, I was wondering what the asterisks were beside the names. And that was to, to, to denote African-American participants. Mm -hmm. And I said, there's my Lewis Adams, and there's my Francis Reno, and that's where I found the written documentation uh, through Siebert's books on the on his work on the Underground Railroad. Mm -hmm. What was that second name you said after Lewis Adams? So, Reno. Reno? Reno. Is that R-E-N-O? Right. But it's pronounced Reno. Reno. Okay. So was and, that, that was another conductor? Yes, sir. That was uh, Lewis Adams' father-in-law. And he was a free black born in Canada. And I think his name, because of the pronunciation, was originally R-E-N-E-A-U, Renault. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's how they pronounced their name. Mm -hmm. is Reno, mm -hmm. and it became anglicized to Reno or mm -hmm. Reno. So 
is his family then the the line with the uh, Shawnee heritage? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, do you want to start talking about that story? Okay. As near as I can document, uh, there was an Indian and a British Shawnee raid on uh, Ruddlesport and uh, Kentucky, which is near Paris, Kentucky, and it's in Bourbon County, uh, maybe Harrison County, Cynthiana, Kentucky, and we're in uh, 1780, and the La Forces had migrated to that part of Western Virginia, which is now Harrison County and Bourbon County, Kentucky, because they were British sympathizers and they were getting a lot of heat from the rebels in Virginia, so they migrated to Western Virginia and settled in uh, Rodas Fort and Martin Ferry. And uh, the British and Shawnee raided that area on June of 1780, and they captured about 400 people in that area and marched them to Detroit. Uh, Captain Henry Byrd and... Uh, uh, there was a McGee, right? Yeah. He, uh, yeah. he was with uh, McKee and the Shawnee Indian. And uh, that's how we got to Canada and the Reno connection. And they all seem to migrate back to Urbana, or this area, mm -hmm. uh, around 1813, because uh, Lewis Adams was then freed in Kentucky, and he settled in this area in Urbana, and he eventually married Susanna McKee LaForce or LaForce McKee and uh, that's how we came to be. That's a connection. That's, it's really an incredible story with all of yeah. these different branches and so rooted in the history. What was it like to learn about that for the first time? Fascinating. It was really fascinating. Uh, I keep uh, getting my names mixed up because Betty LaForce was the slave wife of Rene LaForce. And they had five kids. And one of the kids, Hannah LaForce, uh, was captured in this raid in Kentucky. And her daughter, Candace, 
La Force was born in Blue Jackets Town there in Logan County. Mm-hmm. So Betty, Hannah, Candace, and then Rachel McGee married Francis Reno, and that's where the Reno connection comes in. Mm-hmm. So were you able to share these stories with immediate family? Was anyone else interested in hearing about this? Yeah. I tried to share them with immediate family, but uh, Rita Ann was the only one really interested in researching. And Rita Ann, dear cousin, had, uh, unbeknownst to me, had made the trip to Amherstburg mm-hmm. in uh, Ontario, Canada, many years ago. And uh, she was able to verify much of the story. And then I went up to Windsor on a gambling trip to the casino there in Windsor and uh, did a tour through Windsor and saw the settlement named Sandwich, Ontario, Canada, Mm -hmm. and then out to Amherstburg, and uh, I saw it with my own eyes. And then Mark just came back from a trip to that area, and he saw the land that uh, Matthew Elliott and Dubron Babe, I love saying that name, <laughs> Dubron, Jacques Dubron Babe, and his baby, B A B Y. I love saying that name. <laughs> Could you yeah. tell me more about those two people, Elliot and Babe? They were French and British agents in Canada. And uh, Mark will be able to explain further their role. Mm-hmm. Okay. Could you tell me more about um, Lewis Adams? I feel like we've mentioned him, but we haven't given a, a solid discussion okay. of him. Well, Lewis was born in, uh, we have a family history written in 1920, which states that Lewis was born near Louisville, Mm -hmm. Kentucky, in uh, around 1785. Mm -hmm. And I have his freedom papers, uh, a copy, an image of his freedom papers in 1813, which was filed in Shelbyville, Kentucky. And his owner was William Adams. It presumed to be Lewis's father or maybe Mm -hmm. an uncle. But uh, the Adams men 
that have done DNA testing all carry the same Y DNA haplogroup group as the Adams's, the president, John Adams, really? and John Quincy Adams, and William Adams. All of the men carry the same Y-DNA haplogroup, so there's some truth to the story that uh, his father may have been a congressman, mm -hmm. uh, Samuel Adams, the politician. I think it was Samuel, the politician's son, who was also named Samuel Adams. Mm -hmm. He was a physician surgeon in the Revolutionary War, and uh, he was awarded a bunch of bounty land in Kentucky around Louisville area. Mm -hmm. It's amazing to think of, of this family that was involved in the Revolutionary War and early American government and then having this other descendant who ended up so important in the Underground Railroad. That's exactly. Yeah, that's really impressive. Can you say any more about Lewis Adams later life and when he did get involved in that? Well, he he became free in 1813. And for some reason or another, he settled in Urbana, Ohio mm -hmm. in 1813. And we have his freedom paper, the image of his marriage record, and uh, where he bought the land in 1829 uh, in Concord Township as it's amazing. And we have a picture of uh, Rita Ann's grandfather standing in front of the log cabin where that Lewis Adams built in Urbana, mm -hmm. which was still standing as recently as 19... 49, uh, we had a cousin that remembers the cabin, and it's right across the street. It's look, it was located right across the street from St. Paul AME Church oh, yeah. in Urbana. And uh, I was doing a presentation in Urbana. And this little old lady, I mentioned the log cabin, and this little old lady raised her hand, and she said, uh, I can verify that this log cabin was across the street because we had a fire in my home, and the Adams or the Walker boys who were Adam's descendants moved me into this log cabin with the uh, Adam's descendants. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That was a remarkable story. Yeah. In connection. Funny. So even with with that log cabin existing for so long, from your mother, there weren't stories or discussions about that part of the family? No. There, ne there never was any discussion until uh, 
we got into the Underground Railroad research, at least on my side of the family, on my branch of the family. Mm -hmm. Maybe, uh, evidently, Rita Ann can fill you in because her grandfather was, we have a picture of him standing in front of the cabin. Mm -hmm. So there might have been some discussion on her branch of the family. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the St. Paul African Methodist Church. Could you say anything else about that and Lewis Adams connection? Yeah. Uh, Lewis Adams and his wife, Susanna Reed Adams, and the, his father-in-law and mother-in-law, Francis and Rachel McKee Reno, mm -hmm. uh, were founding members of St. Paul AME Church. And uh, there was another couple, John and Rebecca Gammon. And before you leave Springfield, I want you to drive by the Gammon House. <laughs> which has been documented as a underground railroad safe house by the son of John and Rebecca Gammon. Mm. So there, oh, you, you are able to see the Urbana Springfield connections mm. through the Gammons and the Adamses. Uh, okay, that is very interesting. Um, I, I read somewhere that you were involved with a, a genealogy group for African Americans of the Miami Valley. Um, is that right? Yeah. Could you talk about that group a little bit? Well, we founded that group along with a gentleman named Bob Harris and Jonas Bender. And we started in 1999 in Yellow Springs. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, a hot summer day in August, and we thought we would attract a dozen or so folks, and we had 50 turn out, and uh, we started to uh, The initial concept was that Springfield and Yellow Springs and Urbana and Piqua and Sydney and Troy and Xenia were too small for each city having a group. So we incorporated the nine counties in the Miami Valley mm -hmm. and called ourselves the African American Genealogy Group of the Miami Valley of Ohio mm -hmm. in 1999. We have some images from the Senior Gazette and the Dayton Daily News on our founding, mm -hmm. if you would like to see those. We would, definitely, yeah. So 
of the people involved in that group, did you find that you were related to any of them or any of them cousins or other descendants? Um, f- finding out that uh, we go back three, four generations and there's a inter-family relationship mm-hmm. with many of the former members. Yeah, that is incredible. I, I think I also read that you were uh, considered one of the first families of Ohio as like an official recognition. How yeah. did that How did that come about? Well, uh, uh, I joined the Clark County Genealogical Society and the Champaign County Genealogical Society. And uh, they kept talking about their lineage societies. And I said, well, wait a minute. We qualify for the first, the Champaign County Genealogical Society, which meant that uh, we had ancestors in the Champaign County area prior to 1820. Mm -hmm. And then I joined the Ohio Genealogical Society. And uh, one thing led to another, and we became members of the first families of Ohio Genealogical Lineage Society for OGS and Champaign County. And now the our most recent acquisition has been uh, we're now official members of the Society of the Frontiers of the Old Northwest Territory, which S-F-N-O-N-T is the acronym, S-F-O-N-T, which means that we're officially documented as having relatives in the old Northwest Territory prior to 1787. And we're quite proud of that uh, because that brings in uh, our African-American heritage, Mm -hmm. our Shawnee heritage, and our Caucasian heritage. Mm -hmm. So I I think Barry was telling us something about um, people in Ohio who didn't want to recognize that there were African-Americans in Ohio so early. And maybe that was a conversation he had with Mark, but obviously that's wrong, but there's still people who are kind of having that viewpoint. Is that something that you can, you know, having this own history in your family, you can speak to? Well, Rita can expound on it uh, a little bit further, but I have pictures of our induction into the first families of Ohio and the latest, the Society of Families of the Old Northwest Territory. Mm -hmm. And uh, Rita Ann and I are the only known African Americans belonging to those particular lineage groups. And you have to look at Rita Ann closely 
to see that she's <laughs> she's one of us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm the only one that's obvious in the pictures. Mm -hmm. Wow, that is still very impressive. Um, why do you think uh, you guys are the only two in the society who are recognized as African-American from that time? Do you think if more people, if more research was done into African-Americans at that time, you would uncover more? Because certainly it couldn't have been only your family there. Well, the, uh, we kind of explode the theory that uh, the enslavement period because uh, uh, we've been free or at least our Adam side has been free and the Reno side has been free long before there were boats coming in to Ellis Island. And uh, I don't I don't know why. Uh, so you really have this heritage of uh, like black frontiersmen in Ohio. That's what it sounds like to me. Is is that correct? Huh? There, there are black frontiersmen in Ohio uh, settling the land. Well, uh, when we got seriously into uh, this research, uh, Genealogy wise, there were many folks that would say you have a particular story. Hey, you ought to. Let's see if I can. Uh, here, these, these are, this picture here is from, uh, well, you can read there from Virginia to around Boonesboro, Kentucky, mm -hmm. uh, was where the original. Yeah, so this was where the Battle of the Little Forces was at one of these two sites in, in Goonsboro or Pequot, was it? Right. Wow. And that's the... Draper manuscript. Uh, that was another source. Uh, the Draper manuscript where it describes John Shane reflecting on the Little Forest family at Ruddles Fort and Martin Station. The mulatto woman and her children. And this was the 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 force connection. Mm -hmm. And this is the trek from uh, Henry Bird's trail to from Martin Station, Kentucky to Sandwich, Ontario, Canada. And Candace was born somewhere in Blue Jackets Town. Wow. What's now Bellefontaine, right? Yeah. Yeah, we stopped there yesterday. 
Okay, and this is a list of the slaves, enslaved persons. Yeah, I'm trying to get away from slavery and slave persons to in enslaved persons. Yeah. I gotta watch my terminology. Yeah. Let's see, Scipio. Wow. So, is there any um any documentation of where these other enslaved people were they this, ended up? Or their this is in Marlo K Q U I F. Q U I A F F E. His book, The Day They Invaded Detroit. And this is uh, a listing of the slaves, enslaved persons, and their relationship. Reynolds Ford and Martin Station has a historical society which Rita Ann and I have been to uh, the annual reunion there in uh, Cynthiana, Kentucky. Uh, this is a, oh, wow. a letter from General George Washington and the P.S. down here that uh, requesting that he intervene and return the slaves, enslaved persons from Canada to the Mrs. LaForce in Virginia or Kentucky. This is, that was a gem, finding that. Yeah, the, these families and these people are really just in the middle of so much, in the middle of, of the war, in the middle of these founding father figures. Okay, this is the gammon house that I mentioned, mm -hmm. they were the first persons of color that I can document their marriage in 1807 in Urbana, Ohio. And they were founding members along with the Adams family of St. Paul. This is Lewis's emancipation paper from 1813, and evidently he had three children while he was still enslaved because he was 28 when uh, they released him. Mm -hmm. And the three children are to be released in subsequent years. And I would, would imagine is when they turn 21. Do you know anything about how he got his freedom? Did he buy it for himself or was it, was it granted by the enslaver? Uh, the story goes that he was of a disposition where he was not allowed or didn't get along with the other enslaved persons. Mm -hmm. He was entitled. He felt he was entitled mm -hmm. since I'm Here's the son yeah, of the... your son. Yeah. 
and uh, they freed him. And this is his, his registration as a free person of color in, uh, in Ohio. So you, you had to register. And here's a history of St. Paul. written by another another collateral relative, <laughs> Sheila Farm Clay. It's amazing that so many people have worked so hard to collect all of this yeah. and to go through it. Here's the 1829 deed of conveyance where Lewis bought the land that uh, in Concord Township from a guy named Andrew Blue or Richard Blue. And that's the paper trail from 1829 to 1991. Hmm. Uh, I got this at uh, the Urbana Champaign County Auditor's Office. Boyd and Bowles, uh, those are two collateral families. And this is the abstract of the estate inventory of William Adams and Lewis is freed in 1813 and these are the names of his other slaves and I'm, I'm suspecting that this young lady that he sold could have been the mother of Lewis's children because he got tired of Lewis impregnating this one particular slave, enslaved person. So I'll just sell her off. Is there any record of what happened to her after that? No. That's the handwritten copy of... Okay, now this is the property map and plat map of ownership in Concord Township where Lewis bought his land in 1829 and uh, his neighbor was a fellow named Richard Stanhope, who lived to be a reported 114 years of age, and he had three wives and dozens of children. But uh, So having gone through all of this material and doing all of this research, could you tell any any other stories that kind of stick out as remarkable maybe about 
the Underground Railroad or what it was like to bring people to freedom? Well, this one is an interesting story. Uh, uh, written by Reverend Charles Henry Thompson when he was a student at Oberlin University in 1860. And this guy becomes the first Episcopal, Episcopal priest, African-American in New Orleans, Louisiana. Mm -hmm. But uh, he writes in this story, uh, during his summer work, he would come from Oberlin down to the Miami Valley in Urbana and Bell Fountain, Piqua, Troy. And he remarks that this elderly gentleman around 70 years old uh, called Father Adams and he built this log house mm -hmm. in uh, Concord Township. I have not been able to locate any remains, but uh, he remarks that uh, he was And uh, this is an interview in 1863 by Draper of Rachel Reno. And uh, she relates that her mother was born in Blue Jackets town. The Draper manuscripts uh, has been an in invaluable resource. Mm -hmm. Who was Draper? How did those come about? Lyman C. Draper. Your PhD student, uh, Lyman C. Draper of the Draper Manuscripts. Mm -hmm. That's uh, a good resource. And this is the invaluable. This is the settlement of the estate of Lewis Adams when he died in 1864. And it names all of his children, their spouses. And the amazing thing is that he mentions it mentions that uh, William Adams, his son, paid three thousand dollars in cash in 1864. Uh, William Adams of California, and the story goes that William Adams drove a wagon train from, I believe it was Council Bluffs, Iowa, where wagon trains 
originated from. Mm -hmm. the, because the Renos, his in-laws, had migrated to that area in Iowa as early as 1840. It's a discharge paper. So This is the son that migrated to California in the wagon train. And uh, interestingly, I just found out this year that he died in 1871, but he wasn't buried until 1872. They kept him, uh, his remains preserved in hopes that his family in Ohio would claim their remains. Mm. The, the family being Lewis Adams or other family? Uh, this is Lewis Adams' son, William. Oh, okay, his son named well, then I see. William was quite a guy. Uh, I find him in Ohio in 1850. He's living in Springfield with his brother, Louis Jr. in 1850. I'll find him in Buffalo, New York in the 1855 New York census. Mm -hmm. And I'll find him in 18, 61 is in Sacramento, California. So he, he was a wanderlust. Mm -hmm. Do you know any of these family members were doing during the Civil War? Did any of them serve that you could tell? Uh, yeah, but it's collateral lines. Mm -hmm. The Allens, who the Adamses married into the Allen line, uh, Peter Allen was a Civil War veteran. And uh, Rita Ann can tell you about her side of the family, Civil War activities. Okay, now this picture here is of uh, three underground railroad conductors in Hancock County, Ohio. And this is Rita Ann's great-grandfather, David Adams, who was one of Lewis's sons. All the way to the age of photography. So, Incredible. our Adams family.
goes from up Route 68 from Springfield to Urbana to Bell Fountain to Dunkirk and then Finley and then northward. Well, yesterday we went to the Lewis Adams historical marker that they have in Urbana, and it said something about what's now the Route 68 previously being kind of an underground railroad path and before that being an Indian trail and a, some kind of bison trail. So I guess it makes sense that the family would be up and down the route if these really yeah. were stops on the Underground yeah. Railroad. Yeah. Hundredth birthday. So mm -hmm. who's who's Martha P. Allen? Who is this? Okay, that's uh, and collateral family member who celebrated her 100th birthday in uh, 1905. So she was born in 1805 and uh, she was the result of uh, another relationship between a white man and his, his enslaved, one of his enslaved female uh, this is celebrating her 100th birthday and it mentions uh, as you staying in Columbus? Uh, no, we're, tomorrow we're in Maysville. Ma Maysville. We're going down to Maysville. Okay. Uh, but, uh, and Patsy, she was, uh, a nursemaid to the Daeschler family in Columbus. And uh, Daeschler Hilton Hotel. Hotel. They had her one. And uh, this was uh, another good find. I thought that I was the first in my family, direct family line, to go to college. Mm -hmm. But I see my grandfather's sister was at Wilberforce in 1910. Yeah. Yeah. Emma Adams or Marie Adams. There's Dickie's grandmother. This picture of Rita's side of the family. David Adams the conductor mm -hmm. that was with the two white gentlemen mm -hmm. in the earlier picture. And this is Rita Ann's mother. In 1913. That's the log cabin. Mm -hmm. Urbana. That's amazing. That we mentioned that Lewis had built and it was still standing in 1949.
and that's Rita's grandfather, Corey. This is a cabin in, in Urbana, right? Huh? This is in Urbana. Mm -hmm. Okay. It was in Urbana. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Across from St. Paul AME Church. That's a letter of, of appreciation from Booker T. Washington to our Adams family. Wow. In 1915. That's Oh, uh, this is my grandfather's brother when he was commissioned in World War I. And the language colored boy earns commission. commission. Now this man is damn near in his 30s. Mm -hmm. But they still refer to him as a boy in 1918 and down in the, the body of this language they talk about him being a credit to his race and This is a 1920 Adams family reunion. This is my mother. And my great-grandfather, Isaac Adams. It's interesting how kind of different so many of the complexions are of the people here, and yet they were still, still all family and still all meeting up in 1920. Yeah. And here's the history of the Adams family that was presented at that 1920 reunion where we got most of our information. Mm -hmm. I was trying to, oh, there, you read Ann. <laughs> 1952. Oh. That was 70 years ago, 71 years ago. <laughs> she was a young fox. In 1975, Adams reunion. There's the Underground Railroad plaque in Finley, Ohio. Mm -hmm. First families. Let's see. Is 
Oh, wow. 2006. So that's about 17 years ago. Mm -hmm. Here's my Rugrats. <laughs> when they were young. That's wonderful. Uh, we're featured in the Ohio Genealogical Society. Mm -hmm. Got a lot of stuff. Oh, yeah. This is a uh, her grandfather, when he was a young man, as a mail carrier in Finley, Ohio, in 18... When was that? 1898, he was the first African-American mail carrier in Finley. And he went for 42 years. Well, she'll tell you about it. This is the grave marker for Lewis and Susan Adams in Concord Township. In Champaign County, mm. right outside of Urbana. Oh, since uh, I belong to, I'm a belonger, <laughs> California. Root cellar, since uh, I can prove that my ancestor was in California before the Transcontinental Railroad, that uh, I'm now a member of the California Pioneer Society. Yeah, wow. that's it. That's amazing. I can only imagine just how much time and effort went into collecting all of that and, and organizing it. You yeah. think I have a collection? Yeah. Where do you, <laughs> where do you deal with uh, cousin Rita? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She's got a amazing collection. Right. Excited to see it. I, I wasn't keeping track. I wasn't counting. It's like 24,000. Oh, okay. Asking, asking. How many articles do you have in that collection? Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, I have uh, 142, 36, Another 123, 939, 110 census records. Yeah. So, yeah, pretty well over a thousand. <laughs> That's incredible. 
So is this something uh, your, your kids who you mentioned are, are interested in or, or you think will keep up this tradition of looking into the family history? Well, here's my brood at the uh, last year's family reunion. Oh, very cute. That's my daughter, my son, my grandson, great grandchildren. Wow. And this daughter, <laughs> great granddaughter, I'm proud of her. She just graduated from high school as a 16 year old, and she got a and an associate degree from uh, St. Clair mm -hmm. at the same time. And she's now in uh, some place up in Michigan studying to be a doula, a midwife. Wow. That's... And... And my great grandson was named uh, Mr. Central State University. Yeah. Uh, and he's going to be a senior this year mm -hmm. and uh, carrying a 3.9 GPA in aerospace engineering. So. I'm, that's something <laughs> in aerospace. I'm, I'm pretty proud of. Yeah, you should be. Okay. That's all. All right. Um, do you have any any final thoughts about you know the significance of this of this work or, or why you think it's important, or you know we've been at this a while. We can just wrap up <laughs> if you prefer. <laughs> Well, we hope uh, that uh, we can further the explanation that we weren't always enslaved mm. and there were free people of color even before there was an Ellis Island and uh, the story. It's, uh, it's important that uh, we keep uh, the thought that in mind that there were African Americans who fought alongside of General George Washington mm -hmm. before there was an, an America. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Does anyone else anything? Okay, that, that seems like a good place to wrap up. Uh, Mr. Thomas, thank you so much for all of this. Thank you. Thank you.